Hey everyone. Okay, so right from the jump, the big things with this episode is we get the setup that CP Aegis Zero is on their way to kill Vegapunk on orders from the government. And obviously among this group are the ones we met on, uh, are the ones we met on, uh, uh, at the at the at the reverie on Marie's Wa, which are St Stussy, Luchi, and Kaku, who reveal that yeah, all the people we've seen claiming to be Vegapunk are all duplicates Vegapunk created from his own being, but also that they're tied to his life. So if all of them die, so does he. But obviously, with with this knowledge as well, obviously one one of the other things to talk about is Luchi and Kaku themselves and how. Yeah, they're basically on a collision course reunion with the Straw Hats, and right at the but right at the gate with that particular with that particular knowledge, I actually want to draw attention to the little bit to the to just that whole conversation with among them. But more specifically, I want to focus in on Luchi, because in this ep because was because we actually get an interesting little bit of of characterization and you could say development with Luchi in this episode. Because if you didn't, if you didn't notice, he's, if if you noticed, he's taking, he's the one kind of taking charge in a, in a way where he's the one asking all the questions about their mission, and he, he he's basically the one trying to confirm every single detail that, that that needs to be known about the mission for himself, and 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 about said mission, just with the the first couple of minutes of the episode, just with just him asking all those questions, and. And the reason why I bring this up is, if you remember from way back when, that way, way back when, when we had first met Lucio all the way in Water 7 and CP9, in the CP9 saga of things, this is, <coughs> th th this little, this this whole thing, what, what we get out of Lucio in this episode, is a very, is a small but still stark contrast of how Lucio was it as a member of CP9. Like, as, as a member of CP9, Lucio's whole thing is... Was that, was that he he saw himself as a killing machine whose only purpose was to follow the government's orders. And while he's still doing the latter, just a, just a little conversation with Kaku and Stussy shows he's not doing things as callously as he used to. Which he's again he's asking these questions. He's he's kind of he's he's asking more questions. He's kind of just he's confirming deep. He wants details about what their mission is and. It's however again however small something like that is it is a welcome enough change to the character in just showing his growth since l losing to Luffy he isn't just one to just blind as blind to blindly follow orders as much as he used to um, now I'm not gonna lie as a manga reader I also have a little bit of a mixed re I have a little bit I am a little bit mixed as far as CP zeros overall involvement in this arc because on one hand they do make a big entrance onto the scene and definitely provide a good measuring stick for not only how far the Straw Hats have come but we, we are also going to get to see how much stronger Luchi and Kaku have grown since any lobby as well or at least that's the case initially but the thing the thing is for all the mega hardcore Luchi fans out there you might want to temper your expectations with with his return, because the, the, the weird thing about Luchi and Kaku in this arc for me is that after certain other parties, after certain other parties throw themselves into the mix as well, that's where things become a little bit more complicated with him. Because there are, while well, well, Luchi and Kaku aren't going to be devoid of having moments in this arc, there are the. As and and as there even there even are going to be interesting narrative reveals, but between now and then that involves Luchi's group. But at the same time, after that point, it's one of those things where while I don't want to say they lose relevance, they do kind of fade a bit into the background. Now, based on manga spoilers, I've I've seen apparently that's going that that is going to change a bit with with the next. With the chapter that's going to release tomorrow, but yeah, Luchi's, it's one of those things where I don't, I don't hate, I don't hate them in this arc, but it's like, Luchi's overall, Luchi's, the, the overall involvement of Luchi's group and their importance in this arc is a bit of a weird thing in my mind. Like, again, 
from what I've seen from spoilers from the manga, that that is going to start changing. But it's like it kind of took kind of took long enough. Let's put it that way. Um, and so it's so I, I guess the reason why I'm saying this though is is you are going to see this kind of it's probably going to be a bit of a even even weirder in the in the anime honestly with with how the pacing is sometimes. But yeah. Um, but, okay, moving on from that, though, obviously the other big thing to talk about is shortly after some shenanigans with the clothing machine and getting their new drip, Bonnie and Lu- Bonnie, Luffy, and Jinbei end up fa- Bonnie, Luffy, Jinbei, and Chopper end up face-to-face with what can only be described as a policeman pacifista, and thing is, when, when you look at Bonnie's whole, like, reaction to all this... <sighs> Even though, it's one of those things where even though she stopped Luffy from attacking him and proclaimed the Pacifista as her father, it's it's one of those interesting little mental gymnastics thing I think Bonnie is doing where I think she is fully aware, fully competent of the fact that th- that is not her father. But at the same time, she just can't bring herself to fight anything that shares his likeness. Like, every time she sees one of those... A pacifista or anyone le- that looks like him, she sees fre- she freezes up and just loses all her will to like just all her will, all her like mental. She, she, she just kind of loses herself, which I think in itself shows there's some vi- whatever happened, whatever happened, and what whatever she was there for t- to like see what happened to her father. There is some deep-seated trauma there, and it's something she is going to have to work through, whether it lead in this arc, whether it leads to her killing Vegapunk or not. Like, both, both, it's, I, I, right out of, the, the one thing, I, like, one thing I guess I'm getting at with this explanation is, you can tell that there is some very deep-seated connection between what happened with Kuma and how she knows Vegapunk, and I do like how there is kind of that little bit of a tease of it. Uh, and, of course, after, after all, the, after that, though, we cut to Law and his crew, who are soon confronted by Blackbeard, and if I remember correctly, that whole scene of Blackbeard pulling up on Law's crew, I think was an addition in the, on the anime's part, I think, I'd have to reread that chapter again, but I'm pretty sure, like, in the, in the manga, it just kind of cut to them, like, it just kind of cut to a confrontation, it didn't, like, the anime, it didn't build up to it as much as the anime did, I think. Uh, which, yeah, the fact that we're now here now, though, also means the other, I guess you could say, quote-unquote, fight with Kid isn't too far behind, which does bring up the question, how is Toei gonna, what are Toei gonna do with these fights? Are they gonna change anything, and what are they gonna, like, what are they gonna leave alone, and what are they gonna change? Because... Honestly, as much as it may hurt to see our boys get thoroughly thrashed, especially I, especially kid, I do think these fights should. I personally think these fights should mostly be left alone. You could add a few like accenting moments to Law's fight with Blackbeard, but I don't think there should be any radical changes with these fights, beca- or anything radical or drastic changes that are made to these fights. And because I've, I was, I was a little, I was a little miffed when Oda, when Oda just kind of, well, you know, dusted them with, with how Oda handled these, handled these fights in the manga. But the more I've, more I've thought about it, the more I'm like, you know what? Um, yeah, I, I think I understand the narrative purpose that, that he's going for. It's, it's a, again, it's, you're not going to like it, but. There is reason for it. Um, but, yeah, guys, that's all I got for this review. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, analyze crunch roll, be sure to the notification bell, the subscribe button, and just share the video around, guys. Dark Knight of a Night, signing off. Later, everyone.